Hey, hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Life Stand Gamers, and welcome. So let's talk to you today about how to build rovers. Now, the first little disclaimer I'm going to put in here is there's thousands of ways of doing it. There's different setups. You can have wheels on the side. You can have gyroscopes. You can have motorbikes. You can do pretty much whatever your imagination will allow you to create. But there is some things that stay the same, and that is the wheel settings and the balance. Now, setting up these incorrectly for your build can pretty much have some horrible incidents on your hands. So we've got ourselves a quad bike here. Let's have a quick look at this. Of course, we've got ourselves a very short wheelbase design. Great turning circle. Of course, if we hit the gas too much, we could have a rollover depending on the settings of the wheels. And of course, the friction and the strength of these wheels, the power actually going to them, is going to affect this and stop it from actually rolling because it decides to slide instead. Really cool. I'll show you the wheel configuration for this. So if we go into our wheel settings here, you'll notice that the power is 60%. The strength is 18, so it's a little bit stronger than usual. We've got a standard height offset. We've got friction very low. Friction is very important on this one because we don't want the wheels catching and then flipping itself over. We've got the speed limit set and we've not got any of the other settings set. So if we just adjust the friction to 100%, you can just see how different this is. Yes, it grabs onto the train, but it grabs it too much, bringing them wheels up into the air, unlike before. So, just a few things to consider right there. Let's move on to the Humvee. Now, the Humvee has a different setting set up here. Now, it's not got a, wee a wider wheelbase than the other rover there. It's still just one block in the center, if we can see that. But what they've done with the suspension is they've raised up the wheel. So, I'll just show you the wheel settings here. So, you can see the height offset is minus 32. So, as we actually raise that down to the ground there, you can see if we can actually push it up and down. But, it's very low in the axle. That is going to allow us to do a few things. Of course, if we adjust the strength, it's going to put us higher up in the air. But the power of having this strength very low is going to really benefit this vehicle. Just watch how we start to go into some of these turns here. So by having the strength of them wheels really low, as we get into these sharper corners and we do some evasive type driving, we can really cut into them and we can keep wheels on the ground. And that's going to allow us to do some really evasive maneuvers without risking rolling the rover over. And you can even do this at a higher speed if you need to. Of course, a little bit of brake is required, but you can move around and not have to worry about the whole vehicle rolling over unnecessarily. And that is all due to the suspension strength and the height of it. So let's just park that back up and we'll go on. Now, the next example I want to talk about here is balance. So the balance of a vehicle is crucial. Now, if we turn this to nighttime, we go to the K menu and we press show center of mass. We'll notice the center of mass of all the blocks here. Look how high that is. Now look at the center of mass of these other vehicles. The lower we can get it, or the more in line we can get it with the axles and the wheels, they're more stable and it'll almost feel like it's being glued to the ground. So you can see this with the Humvee here. It's very low to the ground and that's gonna allow us to have that almost glue-like effect. So if we jump in this pickup truck, this pickup truck is straight off the Mad Max world and we'll just have a little bit of a drive around. Now the wheel settings do need a little bit of a look out on this one. But you'll notice as soon as I go into a hard corner, my wheels start to come off the ground. I can I can see them wiggling off and I'm literally holding the key down so I don't roll over. But a sharp turn and there we go. A little bit too much. Now there's a lot we can do to adjust this and stop this from happening. Um, number one, we can adjust the friction levels. So let's have a look at our friction. Our friction is 50%. So if we just turn that down to 30, all right, like so. And then we begin. We'll notice a bit more wheel spin because our power setting might be too high. But even if I jam this into the corners, it's really going to struggle to roll. And that is purely because the friction of the wheels isn't catching on the dirt below and causing it to get stuck and roll over, if that makes any sense to you. Right, so let's adjust this a little bit further. So we're going to throw off our power settings. Let's reduce that down. We're not using that much power, clearly. So there we go. We've balanced out this rover, but still, we could do one thing further and lower that center of mass. Now, we could lower that center of mass by adding some blocks on. I'm going to use some mass blocks in this example. So I'm going to stick one on either end of the axle here. You can see how the block is starting to drop down. So there we go. It's going down ever so slightly at the moment. And what I'll do is just cut that part of the axle out there. And you can see it's dropping. So we've got to keep this balanced over the front area. And since the rear area here is quite light, it means that the cab needs to be balanced over the center. And we've, we've done a pretty good job. So this, with these new settings, should really hog the ground. But you'll notice, due to the added weight now, 
we're going to have to use more power or maybe even change our friction but still we are sticking to the ground like glue yes we can start to bring them wheels up and with more weight that we add to it it's going to be fighting against us but we've, we've built quite a stable truck with a higher center of gravity now let's go over to this bike this is the next thing I want to talk about, gyroscopes on rovers. Gyroscopes are absolutely crucial. If you're going to build a rover without a gyroscope, I personally don't think it's worth having. The main reason it will save your life, unlike this bike that is it's designed a little bit to stabilize the bike so it can run on two wheels, you come over a jump, you need to land on your wheels to survive. If you do not land on your wheels, so if we just accelerate up, do a little bit of air, if we land on anything but our wheels in this situation, our rover will fall to pieces. So as we come back around, we might be able to do a little bit of a demo of that if we can find a big enough air. So if I land on anything else but my wheels, maybe the side, you can see the armor started to take damage. So it's crucial that we use the gyroscopes, a little bit like in Grand Theft Auto if you ever played that, to keep your vehicle stable in flight and land it on the ground. So there we go, let's hit the brakes. And we've got the rover back over here. Now, the next thing I want you to think about, I'm using Void's rover here as an example, is how you're gonna keep these wheels repaired. Now, it's going to happen. These wheels are going to get damaged. And one of the worst things that I've noticed in Space Engine is when they get damaged, they get bits of scrap metal stuck within the wheel itself. And that causes more damage, and then the wheel gets destroyed. And that's why it randomly pops on you sometimes. So having a welder behind here to weld the wheel up is going to keep you alive, especially in combat situations, or if you take a knock that's a little bit too hard. Now, the MBS Rover over it doesn't have that, but it's making up for that by having more wheels. We can lose the whole back section here. And the rover can still maneuver about and just to show you how important the gyroscopes are in this sort of situation we can even jump into the cockpit like so all we have to do is tilt our rover ever so slightly upwards go to the wheel tab and then we can attempt to add the wheels back onwards oh so we can't add the wheels at the moment maybe we haven't got enough blocks in stock but usually you can add the wheels back onto the side just like that and off you go you can get them welded up and if you have a little printer or a welder in the side of your ship like voids you can go on but still a rover with more wheels is going to be able to function for a longer period of time with even wheels lost as you can see this mbs rover does that just here now i'm not going to go over to turret design or talk about anything like that because we are discussing rovers here but when it comes to sticking weapons on them oh god where have i got myself stuck here there we go perfect when it comes to putting weapons on rovers, there's a whole variety of different things you can do. But the priority is stabilizing it so you can use it while the rover is jumping over the terrain. So you're going to need a balanced weapon system with some sort of gyroscopic stabilizer if you plan on shooting it on the move. There is lots of options. You can use missile launchers like Voids here. Voids is set up so it jumps straight up in the air and then it can launch these rockets from above and then it comes into land. So there's, there's lots of different ideas you can do that. Or you can go down more the standard road where you stick... Uh, machine guns and weapons to the front and you just drive at the enemy now let's just head over here we've got ourselves a very basic rover setup and i'm just going to scrap some of these blocks off here as we do this final part so yeah we've built ourselves a dead standard type rover and a lot of people it'll be plug and play and ready to go so just to make this even more of an example i'm going to turn off all the settings i've done with these wheels as i've been messing with it so we're just going to pop the tires off and we're just going to set up a really basic rover. So let's go into our wheels. Let's stick them on first. Now, yes, you have different sizes, but the different sizes are going to really impact how your rover works. I stay away from 5x5 five five wheels. I just, I just don't see them as effective as the 3x3. The three three. And the small wheels, they do have the purpose, but not in all sorts of rover construction. So there we go. We've got our rover. The next thing a lot of people will do is they'll stick the battery on and they'll be off. So let's cut out our landing gear underneath. Okay, so as soon as we start going, we've noticed there's some issues. If I just stop again, there is too. There seems to be too much friction here. You see we're getting these wheelies off the go. Yeah, we're getting good acceleration, but our suspension seems really stiff. So let's go into our wheel settings here and start adjusting them just like I would. So the steering angle's fine. We can have a nice tight steering. The power to the wheels is 60%. That's not too bad. The strength is fine. The height offset, this could be adjusted. I think we need it a little bit lower to the ground. So I'm going to adjust it to about there. So our center of mass drops down. And then we've got friction. So our friction was already too much with this rover. So let's just drop that down a little bit. And let's drop our power down to that amount there. Now we can keep the speed limit in for the moment. And what we're looking for is better performance. I'm still feeling that we're sticking to the terrain a little bit much. Just like that. We've managed to spin ourselves out. So let's do a few more adjustments. We need to adjust the suspension so it cambers up and down a little bit more. 
So we're going to lower our center of mass once again with the wheel blocks. So grab ourselves the wheels. Let's get our height offset. Let's get ourselves right down to the ground like that. Our strength is six. That's fine. Our friction's fine. Our power's fine. Let's just keep going. So as we're getting lower to the ground here, we are getting a little bit more better control of the rover. But I still feel that there is going to be some issues with this design. We've got a spin out like that. That could mean to me that we need a little bit more friction. So let's just have a look at our friction levels. Let's put it back up to 55. Now the issue with too much friction is as we turn corners, we'll, our wheels will stick. And they could just spin us out just like that. So you can see there's a bit more stick in the friction. But we are getting a more reasonably controlled rover. But why don't we just do one final adjustment? Let's change how the mass is laid out. The mass of this rover is further over the back axle. So let's give ourselves a few mass blocks to play with. That might look like too much to you. So it definitely is to me. So we've got the center of mass just slightly off center. Okay, we've got our axles slightly a little bit too much into the ground as well. I'm not liking that. So we're going to have to adjust a few of the settings so we don't scrape along the bottom. So let's adjust our strength up ever so slightly and let's take this for a spin so this added weight has just given us so much more control of this rover i'm still noticing that our wheels are coming off the ground in some of these sharp turns that we're doing but you can see just having the mass over that axle there is a great idea now the final thing i want to wrap up on is cargo i've seen so many players on our servers being messed up by putting cargo on a vessel like this or a little rover and just not considering how much it's going to affect the weight so i'll just demo that to you now so let's grab ourselves a cargo container stick that on the back this is a standard setup i see and they have themselves a connector on the back like that now there's two things you want to consider as soon as we start lowering this it's going to add more weight to the rover yeah yeah it sounds common sense so we're going to put 3k into that cargo container so there we go, we've got 3k, so you can see the center of mass really hasn't shifted too much. But since we've put that higher up as well, we've also got an issue starting to occur there. It's when we start to put meh, uh, sort of mass and weight into this connector without thinking about it. So we've just offloaded our weight into the connector and you can see it's already starting to shift. So you'll see the whole rover will respond completely differently to how we had it before. The turns are, it's not too bad, I'm managing to remain in control. But there we go, we've got a little bit too much friction and we're on our roof. And on top of that, we didn't stick a gyroscope on it, did we? So we're even, even even in more trouble because we can't roll it back on it. A gyroscope, good wheel settings and good balance is key to a rover. If you guys have got any comments or other recommendations on how you like to set up your rovers, let me know in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.